I want to uh, play some commentary on a video that popped up on my um, timeline today. Uh, it's by a creator called a polyglot, a language expert. His name is Steve Kaufman. Him alongside of a lot of other videos, uh, a lot of other people that I watch who produce great content, great advice uh, from somebody who knows multiple languages, who took the path that I'm taking now, that has been through the journeys and knows the best methods to take when it comes to learning a language. Uh, the reason why I particularly it distracts picked, the learner. Oh, sorry. Pick this video is because uh, of the title. The title stood out to me and it was something that I was going through right now. So the title of this video is called Do Not Study Grammar. Do Not Study Grammar. And I think I don't think I know previous on the previous videos, I've been kind of talking about it. And if you've been watching some of the previous videos, you've been seeing that I've been going to uh, websites like Konghu Gamos to practice grammar because I'm at the uh, point in my journey where I feel like it's necessary to uh, start cr uh, perfecting the craft so that I can uh, actually take um, take and receive certifications in the language because uh, if you've been watching the weaknesses that I have are definitely um, grammar and conjugations and, and things, the intricacies of language learning. So I, 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 I'm very interested to see what Steve Kaufman has to say about not learning, uh, not studying grammar. I'm, I'm, I want to see his point of view on it and see if we agree on um, some things. So let's let's give it a listen from the main goal, which is to get lots of exposure to the language. Steve Coffin here. And today, you know, I want to talk about grammar. How important is grammar? And I'm going to talk about grammar in the context of all of the details of languages that we learn in school. How effective is it to teach these details if the ultimate goal is to become fluent in a language? Now, Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. You can click on the bell for notifications. By the way, you'll notice that I have my link t-shirt on. I just happened to find that in a closet when I was getting dressed this morning. Um, at any rate, so, you know, details. One of the things that struck me in Manfred Spitzer's book, and I often refer to it, is that when he explains that the brain, our brains, and all the brains, the process of learning is the same. There are no people with brains that learn better this way or that way, our brains learn the same, the same way. We have our likes and dislikes, but the process of learning is the same. And the brains are better, our brains are better at forming patterns, at recognizing patterns, and not so good at retaining detail. That's a fantastic point that he's bringing up there. And this uh, rings true, and I think it rings true for a lot of people because a lot of people learn better once they can recognize patterns and that's just not in language learning that's in a, a lot of studies and skills that I've, I've i've noticed across just being in curriculums in school and seeing that um sticking with language in particular we they have what you call a regular and irregular verbs with the regular verbs they all follow a certain pattern for me it was easier to pick up on those versus irregular verbs where the rules change and when those patterns are broken, it's a lot harder to retain those those type of details versus understanding how a pattern works with the regular verbs and the regular um, conjugations. Um, I remember when I was looking over some grammar uh, throughout this journey, uh, my 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 learning came to a halt when I got to like the subjunctive uh, tense and in this language because it just didn't make sense it didn't follow any uh patterns and it was just like you know i'm gonna cut it off here because it wasn't it wasn't that great for me so i needed to um i needed to to come to a stop on that so i agree so that uh, the details that we learn that we keep somewhere in our short-term memory we lose them but over time the brain starts to recognize a pattern and that's very much, in my view, the process by which we learn languages. 
So, you know, if you sort of spell out like grammar, grammar basically describes usage. So since languages evolve over time, sounds in languages evolve over time, uh, you know, usage patterns evolve over time. So the grammar which describes the usage will evolve over time. So how useful is it to attempt to teach people how the language, what, what the rules of usage are before the learner has had enough experience with the language? I think it's not that useful. And at least in our school system in Canada where they teach French, they teach grammar. They teach grammar because it's something they can easily test the learners on. And some learners got eight out of 10 and some got six out of 10. So learner A with eight out of 10 is better than learner B with six out of 10. But that doesn't necessarily mean that at the end of the day, learner A is going to be better uh, at speaking than learner B. It may mean that, but it's not obvious. And there are many cases where learner B, who maybe is exposed more to the language, maybe had, comes from a you know, a country where the language is spoken, he hears the language at home, but he speaks it incorrectly from a grammatical point of view. And so he does poorly on the test, but he understands and he communicates. And there are many examples like that. So my feeling on grammar and other details of the language is that they can be introduced at any time. They should be introduced when the learner is interested in them. It's, a, it's true that many of the patterns in the language... Yeah, I absolutely... 100% agree with this aspect. Um, sure, there are definite pros to learning grammar at the beginning, to really learning, the, to building a solid foundation. But again, that depends on your goals, right? So the goals that I had set forth, I had, I had solid goals. I wanted to, the first goal was to understand, to understand what the speaker is saying. The second goal was to be able to communicate it back and reciprocate a, a, a conversation. And then of course, the final goal is mastery, understanding the grammar, understanding what uh, the intricacies of the language and applying that to be able to get a certification, to be able to get some paperwork behind to stand, that's stating that I put in the work, this is, uh, this is what I have to show for it. And the way, grammar is at least for me studying grammar is 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 very meticulous in the fact that it's it's about the same as learning through textbooks and things like that it just seemed very monotonous to learn and i just was not interested in it, at least for the goals that i had for myself so um if your goal is to just be able to speak to be able to converse with other people um grammar should be you should look over grammar 
at least in my opinion, you should definitely look over grammar, but you should not make that your primary. I think, I think the best thing for learners to do is to get the exposure uh, to learning the language, get as much exposure as possible, whether it be listening, learning, and just talking with other people. Uh, and grammar should be one of the last things you really, really focus on. You know, are not noticed when we hear, even hearing the language over and over again, we don't notice certain niceties of pronunciation. We don't notice that certain syllables aren't stressed. We don't notice, you know, the whatever it might be, third person singular in English uh, of the present tense. Uh, it, it takes an S, whereas the other forms of the verb don't. We don't notice these things. So sometimes it can be useful to point these things out. Therefore, I think it's useful to have a reference grammar. And every language that I have learned, I have tried to get a hold of a grammar as small as possible with no exercises, no drills, just what happens in the language and a bunch of examples. And so I look at that and I see the examples and it's just helping my brain get used to how the language works, the patterns in the language. And this approach, I think, is the same for other details of the language. For example, pronunciation. Up front, when it is explained to you using international phonetic, the international phonetic alphabet, that this sound is pronounced this way, I don't personally find that very useful. Uh, I find that with the availability of, of audio today, text to speech, I can hear how it's pronounced. But it is possible that three months later, having listened to the language, just kind of piggyback many, many, what he's taught or what he said there, there are so many available resources for you to um, learn how to pronounce words. I said it once before, but Hello Talk is one of the best resources for people who are learning language because it's just a, a community built around people that wants to learn and wants to teach. And it's completely free unless you want to get the pro version, which has a little bit more extra uh, perks. But it's completely free, and what you can, what you do, you just, uh, if you have an, a, a problem pronoun pronouncing a word, you voice record it, send it off for the world to see, and you're going to get so much feedback from other, uh, from other students, from other people that are learning the language, and they'll repeat it for you slow, they'll repeat it for you, so you can get a feel of how to pronounce, uh, how to pronounce a certain word. So there's a, a there's, there's tons of resources for that. And I and, and studying how it should sound on a um, excuse me one moment. many times I still don't notice that a certain vowel is pronounced a certain way, or I don't notice that the stress is a certain way, uh, or in the case of pitch accent that it's this way rather than that way. And so at that time later on to help us notice things that might have passed us by, it's useful to refer to these explanations. But there is far too much emphasis placed, placed on these, uh, these explanations or these details of a language uh, with the intention of testing people on these details. And the result is normally not very good because it distracts the learner from the main goal, which is to get lots of exposure to the language, lots of listening, lots of reading. And as Krashen says, in an environment that is low stress, that is enjoyable. And if you do that, and if you trust your brain, a lot of these- Yep, an environment. So that's why I place so much emphasis in making learning fun because the way school is set up, it's, 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 it's create, it creates a lot of stress because if you're not understanding something, your whole, your whole you're being judged wholly based off how well you perform. So that creates a high stress environment. And, and it's more so a one size fits all type technique uh, when it comes to the curriculum, at least in my experience, um, I was not interested in Spanish at all in high school. Um, I'm not gonna say at all, I was interested in it, but I did not want to put in the work. And the way our school was, my my school is very unique because our school is predominantly black about 85 percent of us was black 15 percent was latino was no caucasian so if you were a t a foreign teacher or you was a caucasian teacher you really stood no chance the students didn't really respect you um and people did exactly what they wanted to do um versus if 
somebody like me who just come in and and sit in class and just uh mind their business they got a good grade you get a good grade for that so my experience is different when it comes to uh to um to the school system but yeah to create a low stress environment um the best and, and he mentioned exposure like i mentioned before so the best thing that helped me learn was definitely watching telenovelas uh the one that i finished completely the first one i com uh, finished completely it was called uh bajo el mismo cielo and this telenovela is 182 episodes long so i started from the very beginning and of course at the very beginning i didn't understand nada i didn't understand nothing and each episode is about 45 minutes long and by the time you get through rewinding and trying to figure out what was said and just kind of memorizing what was said and getting used to the language by by episode i say 70 you at least can get through you can at least get through an episode um having a general idea of what is going on so by about 182 you've been so you've been so familiarized with the language and hearing it that it gets to the point to where you really understand what's going on and not only did i watch it once i watched it twice the first time through it was a lot of rewinding the second time through at least i knew what was going on and i understood it a lot better it was just get about getting that exposure and then moving on to other aspects as well so these things will be acquired naturally and therefore you needn't be tested on them. if the goal is comprehension they don't even need to test you on your comprehension even if you misunderstand something the fact that you are putting in the time listening and reading will eventually enable your brain to get used to the language so in my approach to language learning i want to sort of de-emphasize the sort of details the grammar the other specific explanations because our brains are not as good at dealing with these explanations and rather encourage people to find ways to enjoy the language listen to the language don't worry about what you don't understand don't worry about the mistakes that you make if you continue to expose yourself to the language you will gradually get better and when you are interested and genuinely curious about specific details you can look them up and it's never been easier to look them up but but don't get yourself a thick grammar book like he's, this he's uh speaking almost verbatim of what i was kind of mentioning earlier about about worrying about the intricacies of the language further down the road as you reach a point to where it's time to start mastering the language if you want to um take that extra step uh when i want the reason one of the reasons why i didn't make I didn't put emphasis on learning grammar is because when I'm speaking with um, an Espano Blante that doesn't speak English well, his gra the, the, the grammar of that Espano Blante is, it may be terrible, it may be bad, but the main thing is he can communicate the point, he can communicate the idea. He's and and to me that's fluency if you're able to communicate an idea you're able to communicate your thoughts and project it across and be able to get a response from somebody else in that native language that's fluency to me uh just because the grammar's off or whatever that wasn't the main importance when it came to learning the language or when it came to understanding a language so i get yourself the thinnest possible grammar book which explains what's happened in the language with examples, without exercises, without drills, and go over it regularly. Don't try and block learn the conjugation table of a specific verb. Just look it over. Forget it. Look it over, recognize you're going to forget it, and go back there. And eventually, over time, that activity, looking things up, grammar rules, whatever, uh, which are limited, unlike the amount of words we have to learn, which is almost unlimited, the grammar rules are actually quite limited. And if you keep on flipping through a sort of a thin grammar book, you will eventually get a very good overview of what happens in the language. 
And when you combine that with lots of listening and reading, you're going to get better and better at the language, rather than trying to fight the rules of grammar up front. So that's my take on grammar. And yeah, um, for the most part, for the majority of things, pretty much everything that you said, I agree uh, with. I do. Um, the the title is misleading, and it's it's a it's a clickbait. It's a grabber. It's a, it's a it's a grabber. It's clickbait. Um, so the main takeaways from the video is just I'm just do not worry about the intricacies. Get out there, speak, listen, read, write as much as possible without worrying about las reglas. And that comes to when it when it comes to um, English too. Even learning English. I did not, I still do not, did not study grammar. It just can't, it just, as you get exposed, as your people talking to you as a kid, it becomes natural to you to speak in a certain way. Um, once you get actual people correcting you, or you actually start getting to school and the, intric and the intricacies count, then that's when you should start studying the grammar. Uh, in my case, if you're outside and you're just doing this for fun, you don't need to study it unless you're going out to try to get certified in a, a language and you want that additional sheet of paper. So um, that is the end of the video. So um, remember, just be grateful. Show some gratitude.